Hi everybody and welcome back to Teachers Talk Money where I help teachers master their money in order to give back to themselves. I'm somebody that loves to create systems that add more convenience and elegance to my life every step of the way. And that's what initially attracted me to using spreadsheets as my budget templates. I wanted to design a way of budgeting that I could easily customize to my specific wants and needs. I've tried so many budgeting apps and I've even worked with pen and paper, bullet journaling with for my budgets, um, pen and paper templates, but there's just something that is so useful about being able to immediately personalize and adjust something to your exact needs and have all those numbers add up automatically. However, I have never been trained in using spreadsheets formally, so I taught myself it was a bit of a learning curve and I wanted to give you guys a video today that just breaks down the most crucial features that you need to know if you are creating or personalizing a budget template in spreadsheet form. So as we're going through these features, I'd like for you to work with this along with me. You can start from scratch from opening up your own Google Sheet or Excel Sheet, or you can download my existing budget templates as a place to start and then customize from there. These are linked in the description of this video, so go click on the link in the description and get your, your free budget template from me as a place to start with this. Now I'm going to flip you over my shoulder and show you the most important tools and features that I use when I'm creating my budget. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, so here we are in my actual budget spreadsheet. This is what I use month to month. This one's for the month of January. I actually have two different templates that I've used. This is my most current one, and I like it because it fits into a smaller amount of space. And previously I used this style in December, where I sort of had all the categories to one side and then my running totals and notes on the other. This is a lot simpler in many ways, and then this one sort of just is a little bit more advanced in my mind. The way I set up my budget is I have basically just four categories that matter to me. I like to look at it with just income, fixed expenses, variable expenses, and savings. And the reason I like to do this is because it is the simplest way for me to think about my money and what matters with it. A lot of budget spreadsheets or other styles of budgeting will have you make different categories for like transportation, clothing, housing, and have all of those things in separate categories. But for me, it's not really that useful and it ends up just making sort of this behemoth of a budget versus just having four simple, easy categories. So first you wanna start with income. This was a really good month for me. I had three paychecks this month. Um, and then you want to look at your fixed costs. And that is because those are the things that absolutely have to be paid month to month. Then I have my category for variable costs, which is all of the things that change in expenses from month to month. And then finally, I look at my savings. Now, I have my savings front and center because I've sort of memorized my variable costs and fixed costs and all of that stuff. So I like to really focus on what I'm putting aside for my future and midterm goals but you can put these in any order that you prefer. And the easiest thing about this and the way I divide it this way is that I know that I don't have to keep track of my spending and my fixed costs because those are the exact same every month. I know that I don't really have to keep track of my savings because I have set them at the beginning of the month and that is most likely exactly what they'll be or I'll adjust it a little bit as I go on. I like keeping my variable costs separate. So I don't care if it's for housing, transportation, food. All I care about is that it's a different amount every month. And that is because these are the costs that I need to track. Everything else is pretty much the same month to month. So I still set an expected amount for each total, but then I go up over here and track them as I occur costs month to month. So for example, you can see in December that I didn't get any ga gas. You can see exactly what I spent in miscellaneous going out and groceries. So that's why I do it this way. And these running totals where I track each of my costs are really the reason that I made my budget template spreadsheet this way because I couldn't really get this feature with any other budgeting app. Either they would do it automatically and completely miscategorize things and it would be a hassle to go in and change it or they weren't linked to all of my accounts, 
or they were linked to none of my accounts, but they didn't have a place for me to write in exactly where I spent that dining money. And I really wanted to look at my specific habits more closely than that. So that's kind of the reason that this whole budget spreadsheet came about. But now I'm gonna show you guys the features that I use and really the only features you need to use when it comes to creating a budget spreadsheet. So the first one is really the most important one. And this is the sum function. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what that is. This is the reason that it's more convenient to do this on a spreadsheet versus on papers. Not only do I have, you know, sort of a more easy way of adjusting it month to month, but all of my totals will add up for me automatically. So for example, under my payments, when I go to what's expected, it totals it up, each of my different paychecks down here automatically. And the way that it does this, and you can see I already have it set up, but I'll do it again to show you, is I click on where I want the total to go. I go up to here to this sort of backwards E looking thing that is a symbol for function. Click on it, I click sum, it's the very first one that comes up. And then I select exactly what numbers I want this to add up. So I'm going to select these three cells because that's what I want it to be including. And then I press enter and boom, the total automatically populates there. The same thing happens for all of my um, running totals categories. So say I get some pizza and it costs me $10. I just plug that in and automatically the $10 populates down here. And the reason for that is because I've set up the sum function, which I'll show you one more time. So I click on the cell where I want it to populate. I go to functions and I click sum, and then I highlight all the cells that I want it to automatically and add up. And then once I do that, whatever numbers I add into any of these cells will automatically populate in this bottom cell. And this is the most useful feature. So I have all of these populating here. And then I also have set them to populate over here in my variable costs category. So say for example, you know, I go to the grocery store one day and I spend $30, it automatically totals up down here. And I have also set this sum over here to be exactly this number here. So it's sort of a series of things, right? I created this sum, by using the sum function, selecting the cells I wanted to, and then pressing enter. And then I created this sum by clicking in the cell, clicking the sum function, and clicking this cell where it's already populating. So boom, automatically it goes in here and it goes into my variable expenses category. That is really the coolest thing. And honestly, the only feature that you need to know to make spreadsheets more beneficial. But we're gonna get into some even cooler design features now. So the next feature I wanna to talk to you guys about is graphs. This is awesome for me. I absolutely love using graphs on my budget spreadsheet because it really sort of helps illustrate, illuminate, and give you an actual visual of what your money is doing. The main way I use this is where I have my net worth tracker, which this is also available on the budget um, template spreadsheets that are available at the link in the description of this video. But it's super simple. I just lay out all the numbers and I highlight the cells that I wanna make a graph out of. So in this case, it was my net worth for 2020. So I highlighted the date and the net worth number. And then I cl clicked this button, which is insert chart. And it comes up with all of these different types of charts you can use. I wanted a line graph for this because that was sort of the most accurate way of representing it to me in my mind. But you can do bar graphs, pie charts, all of that good stuff. So let's take a look at an example where a pie chart will be useful. I have added sort of just written out all these totals on this side. Um, normally this isn't here. This is just something I did to make making the pie graph easier. For some reason, when I would select the totals and the names of the categories over here and click control and select more, it wouldn't make the graph correctly. So what I did was I just listed them all out on one line and that seemed to work. So here's what we'll do. We're going to highlight all of my spending so I'm gonna make a pie graph 
to look at exactly what percentages of my spending are allocated where. I'm gonna click insert chart. And it's going to come up automatically, probably with the wrong kind of chart. Let's see what it comes up with. Yeah, so it's given me a bar graph, which I don't, I don't care for that. I'd like to see it in a pie chart. So I'm going to go to chart type and I'm gonna choose a, let's do this donut chart. And this shows me exactly, and I can just move it around easily like this. It shows me exactly where all of my spending is going, which is really cool. I can see how much is going towards, this is my invest, one of my investment accounts, my Roth IRA, this is my rent. Um, by the way, this is not a typical month. Like I said, this was a three paycheck month for me. So that's why I deposited so much into that Roth IRA. And so that's pretty cool. And I've already, I've got my pie chart there. Hello. And I can sort of just move it around wherever I want it to go. All right, let's take a look at another way of doing this. So I also just use my different categories of where I allocated my money. And we can do a simple pie graph with just sort of these three categories to take a look at it. And look at that, it automatically populated it into a pie chart. And this shows me what my savings rate is for the month. For this month, it was really high, like I said, because it was a three paycheck month. It shows me how much I spend on my fixed costs and how much I spend on my variable costs. And you could break this down by any category. It's just a matter of plugging in the category and the numbers, highlighting it, and then sort of customizing the chart from there. So these are two really awesome features. Um, so, so far we've covered the sum feature and the graph feature. Those are the, probably the two coolest slash most important. But there are other little things we can do to customize it. So one thing, and you may already be aware of this, but something that's really useful for me is the feature to merge cells. So there's a reason I was able to get this very large block here, and that was from merging cells, which is very easy. You just sort of highlight the cells you wanna merge. Let's say I wanna make a, a big box here for more notes or something like that. And I just click this button up here, which says merge cells and it makes it into one box that I can type into. Super easy, and if you wanna undo it, you just unmerge. Very simple and easy, and that kind of allows me to sort of at least block out the space that I'm not using, add some um, information into this extra space that I sort of had to make this a full square. So I really like that, and it allowed me to sort of have all my notes laid out as well. Then there are other design features. Of course, you can change these colors to anything you'd like to. I just sort of like the blue, I don't know why. And the borders are really useful for me as well. So as you can see, there are some thicker lines here between the different categories, which was really important for me. And the way that you do that with the borders is you simply select the cells that you wanna put borders around. So um, let's say that I wanted to put a border around these two. And let's say I just wanted to kind of put one at the bottom to sort of separate out that blue and that white. And it's super easy, it just goes in like this. I don't like to do this this way because I kind of like to have, you know, all of my grocery stuff together, all my gas stuff together, so on and so forth. But you can sort of do it with whatever um, cells you'd like to in whatever way. So I am going to take off that bottom border now but because I totally cleared it, I'll have to sort of re-add the other ones that I want, which were just these ones on the side. And there you have it. So a little bit trickier sometimes, but really visually a lot better when it comes to actually utilizing the spreadsheet. I think that is all. I hope that this tutorial and learning about the sum feature, the graph feature, and some of the more aesthetic features was useful to you guys. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. Comment about how you budget. Do you use pen and paper? Are you excited to try a spreadsheet? Maybe you have tried a spreadsheet before, but you've never found these features or been able to make it work. Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much. Remember, if you're interested in using one of my budget templates, so there's this one, I have a pen and paper version, and I also have this style as well. If you're interested in using any of these, you can find it on 
the link in the description of this video, teacherstalkmoney.com slash budget. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to like it, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you found it valuable. It means the world to me and it helps me to grow this channel. Have an amazing week, everyone, and I will see you next week. Bye.